Um, the market is powering ahead and one sector which is building on to gains or cementing gains I should say is the cement sector of course. You have names like India Cement which is up 17% as we speak, Ramco is up 5%, JK Cement is higher by 4%, Ultratech Cement is higher and all of those names will come up for you on the screen. Um, but separately we have Ronald Sioni joining us from the Sher Khan uh, brokerage house to talk to us about what his views are on the cement sector. Ronald, hi, good to be speaking with you. Let's begin by discussing the fundamentals, right? Has something changed materially in terms of, let's say, the pricing power or something with respect to the raw material prices dipping, which gives a fundamental tailwind to the sector? Yeah. Hi, good afternoon and thank you for having me on the show. Uh, so, yes, uh, you are right. So, you know, post-elections, you know, uh, continuity of the Austral government and retention of, uh, you know, key ministries such as road ministry being retained by Mr. Nitin Gatkari. Uh, you know that gives uh, you know strong uh, demand outlook over the next four to five years in terms of you know government capex, especially on the infrastructure and especially on the road sector. So demand outlook for the sector remains positive over the next uh, four to five years. Second thing, you know, post a dip in demand uh, during April uh, due to elections and you know uh, because of that, but. We have seen May month, you know, getting uh, demand improvement uh, getting visible. We also saw, uh, you know, transportation of cement through rail increasing by about 11 percent month on month uh, in May. Also, June month has been uh, good in terms of demand. So we are seeing, you know, uh, uh, election period getting over and you know, demand revival happening. And with that, uh, alongside there is a, um, you know, coinciding, coinciding, coinciding with the uh, uh, cement players, you know, uh, initiating price hikes uh, during the month of June. Although the tandem was very slow, they started with rupees 10 per bag. Uh, though uh, the absorption has not been entirely in, in each and every region, but uh, there is an intention within the sector, you know, to go ahead with the cement price hike. So we have seen about 1.5 percent odd uh, uh, price hikes during June month on an average on pan India basis. But still, you know, Pan India prices remain lower sequentially for quarter one of FY25 by about three to four percent. Um, but on the other side, as you said, you know, uh, raw material, especially pet coke prices, we have seen pet coke prices, you know, softening during quarter one of FY25. Uh, you know, US pet coke prices by about five percent sequentially and domestic by about two percent. So this also, you know, provides a little bit tailwind for. Uh, over the next one to two quarters, you know, in terms of power and fuel costs uh, getting further east. Uh, but overall, the sector is very well poised in terms of uh, demand, in terms of the intention to, you know, improve the uh, cement prices and, you know, cost tailwinds uh, getting factored in. Overall, for FI25, we expect, you know, demand environment to be in a high single digit, while all the major uh, cement players are eyeing, you know, double digit. Uh, volume growth for FI25 outpacing the industry growth rate. So, you know, we should see a good, um, you know, uh, next one to, two, one to two years in terms of uh, uh, a strong demand environment for the sector as a whole. Expecting strong demand environment and obviously this time what we saw as well a very mild price hike that came in. But what is the sustainability in terms of the price hikes that we are seeing because what comes into question is also the monsoon season coming in, right? What is the impact of that? Do you think they will be still taking price hikes or maybe this is it that as of now at least in this quarter is what one could watch out for? Uh, on the contrary, we did not see much price hike. You know, uh, before, uh, during this time period, uh, historically, there, there is a higher price hike because, you know, uh, the discounts which are given during quarter four of each year, uh, you know, goes away to, uh, to push volumes in Q4. So generally, you know, we see quarter one and quarter two periods where, you know, cement prices in, start to inch up, uh, you know, optically. Uh, but this time around, the price hike has been marginal. One of the reasons, uh, you know, being, you know, half of the period, you know, getting uh, impacted by elections. Also, uh, there is a tailwind in terms of power and fuel cost easing. So, on uh, there is a respite in cost. And, you know, there was a low demand. So, uh, we, we may not have seen the kind of price hikes uh, we used to see. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, a softer uh, raw material price and in 
improvement in demand uh, provide comfort uh, uh, during the upcoming monsoon season as well. Point. Um, I understand, Ronald, that you don't have a direct coverage on India Simmons, but that's the stock which is firing up right now. And of course, uh, there's this entire buzz of consolidation in the sector. Uh, the Adani Group recently bought uh, the Penna Industries in the South as well. Which are the other consolidation candidates that you see? And if you know this entire news flow, which is doing the rounds, does actually fructify, what does it mean for the Adani Group of cement companies? Yeah, it would be always better, you know, if uh, consolidation happens and less and less uh, greenfield expansion happens going forward. So this would this should be better for the whole industry uh, as a whole. So if you know uh, there are more uh, uh, you know organic expansions, it would be better. But the companies are still you know going ahead with their brownfield and greenfield expansions, especially the major players. So if uh, if you, you know over the 12 months to 24 months we see further good acquisitions, then uh, the, this greenfield or you know brownfield projects may get a little bit delayed, or then uh, there will be some pushback in terms of capacity additions. So yes, um, there are all the you know uh, uh, plenty of names uh, which are doing the rounds in terms of all the. Uh, smaller sized uh, companies which could be you know potential acquisition targets but you know at what the price uh, they get acquired uh, that would be a key consideration because uh, strong cash flows are expected from these large companies which uh, you know uh, would be getting deployed for you know organic or inorganic expansions and if they get uh, you know inorganic uh, uh, route if they deploy this inorganic route then uh, they can you know capture the strong demand environment at a, a faster clip and improve the market share right and uh, ronald any interesting uh, picks that you have right now in the cement pack what are you specifically looking at given that you know obviously we're expecting the real estate side the infra boom also coming in anything specifically on the cement side that you're looking at <clears throat> So on the cement space, uh, we have stick to our, you know, uh, preferred picks uh, from, you know, start of the up cycle itself uh, being Ultratech, uh, Sri Cement, uh, Dalmia Bharat, Ramco Cement, JK Luxe Cement. So Ultratech has really, you know, caught up on the valuation, but Sri Cement is yet to catch up on the valuation. There's still upside uh, in terms of, uh, you know, catching up with uh, Ultratech. It, at one point of time, it used to trade premium to Ultratech. Uh, but uh, Ramco and Dalmia Bara, JK Lakshmi Cement are also good uh, candidates, you know, for um, uh, yeah, getting an upward re-rating in terms of EV to EBITDA multiple. So Ultratech is currently trading at around 18 times EV to EBITDA on 526 earnings, but Sri Cement is at just 14 times and, uh, you know, Ramco and Dalmia Bara around 11 to 13 times, while JK Lakshmi at about 9 times EV to EBITDA. So, uh, you know, these companies, uh, you know, offer a creating triggers in terms of valuation multiples. Thanks so much for making time and speaking with us and talking to us about why uh, the entire sector is buzzing because clearly India cement is on fire and as is the rest of the sector. But what's all? If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.